Hello students. Now in this video, we will discuss about the vapor pressure and Raoult's law. First, we will discuss about the vapor pressure of liquid-liquid solutions. We will discuss the binary solution which have two volatile liquids. Volatile means which easily convert into the vapor state. And if these two components are represented by 1 and 2, their partial vapor pressure are represented by P1 and P2. Their mole fractions are represented by X1 and X2. And total vapor pressure at equilibrium is represented by P total. Then we apply the Raoult's law. What the statement of this? For a solution of volatile liquids, the partial vapor pressure of each component of the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction present in the solution. Now for component 1, the partial vapor pressure is P1 is directly proportional to its mole fraction X1. In the same way for component 2, partial vapor pressure of it that is P2 is directly proportional to its mole fraction X2. If, you, if we remove this proportionality constant, then we will get the another constant that is P01. In this case, P01 is the vapor pressure of pure component 1 at the same temperature. It means when component only component 1 only present, then whatever its vapor pressure, this is represented by P01. In the same case, if component 2 is only present, then its vapor pressure is P02. According to Dalton's law of partial pressure, P total is P1 plus P2. If we put the value of P1 and P2 from this, then we will get this one P total is equal to P naught 1 X1 plus P naught 2 X2. Now in this equation, if we put the value of X1 and X2, as we know, sum of mole fractions of all the component is equal to 1. So from this we can say X1 plus X2 is equal to 1, X1 is equal to 1 minus X2. Put the value of X1, X1 in this equation will get P total is equal to 1 minus X2 multiplied by P naught 1 plus P naught 2 X2. Just solve it. P naught 1 minus P naught 1 X2 plus P naught 2 X2. Rearrange this equation. We will get P total is equal to P naught 1 plus P naught 2 X2 minus P naught 1 X2. Now from these two terms, x2 is the common this is common then we will get the final equation is p total is equal to p naught 1 plus p naught 2 minus p naught 1 multiplied by x2 in the same way if in this equation we will put the value of x2 which is equal to 1 minus x1 then we will get this equation p total is equal to p naught 2 plus p naught 1 minus p naught 2 multiplied by x1 now from this or from this we can find out some conclusion and these are the conclusion total vapor pressure over the solution can be related to the mole fraction of any one component that is either x1 or x2 total vapor pressure over the solution varies lin linearly with the mole fraction of component 2 you can say actually for component 1 actually these two equations these are the linear equations. So we can correlate this is P total with mole fraction of component 2 X2 or P total is correlated with the mole fraction of component 1 that is X1. Depending on the vapor pressures of the pure component 1 and 2 that is P naught 1 and P naught 2 total vapor pressure over the solution decreases or increases with the increase of the mole fraction of component 2 or component 1. Now from these equations we can plot a graph between vapor pressure this is side vapor pressure and this side is mole fraction. Now see at this we are taking the pure component 1 that's why mole fraction of the component 1 is equal to 1 that is only component 1 is present. Now that's why its vapor pressure is equal to P naught 1. That is only pure component 1 is present. If you go from left to right, then its small fraction is decreases and reaches to 0. That's why this 
is decreases from p naught 1 to 0. In the same way, this side we are taking the power component 2 and its small fraction is 1. That is only component 2 is present. That's why this is represent the vapor pressure of component 2. Now, if we go from right, that is this to this, that is from this side to this side, then at this side, mole fraction of component 2 becomes 0. That's why we can say this line is decreases and reaches up to 0. If we join this point and this point, we will get the one straight line and this straight line represent the vapor pressure of component 1 and 2. That is total vapor pressure of the solution. Is it clear? And again, in this case, it is assumed that component 1 is less volatile. That's why its vapor pressure is less and this is component 2 is more volatile. That's why its vapor pressure is more. Now, composition of vapor phase of solution. The composition of vapor phase in equilibrium with the solution is determined by the partial pressures of the components. If Y1 and Y2 are the mole fraction of the component 1 and 2 respectively in the vapor phase. Remember it. X1 and X2 are the mole fraction of components 1 and 2 respectively in the liquid state and y1 and y2 are in vapor phase then using dalton's law of partial pressure you can say this is p1 is equal to mole fraction of component 1 multiplied by total vapor pressure we can find out the value of y1 in the same way p2 is equal to mole fraction of component 2 multiplied by p total and from this we can find out the mole fraction of component 2 in vapor phase so remember these two formula are used to find out the composition in vapor phase now we'll discuss the one numerical vapor pressure of chloroform chcl3 and dichloromethane ch2cl2 a298 kelvin are 200 mm mercury this is the unit of pressure and 415 mm mercury respectively calculate the vapor pressure of the solution prepared by mixing 25.5 gram of chloroform and 40 gram of ch2cl2 a298 kelvin and second part is mole fractions of each component in vapor phase so first of all we will find out the vapor pressure of the solution and for this, we use this formula. P total is equal to P naught 1 plus P naught 2 minus P naught 1. And this fact, uh, difference is multiplied by X2. And in this case, this is P naught 1 and P naught 2. These are the vapor pressure of pure components. And these are given in the question. And X2 is the mole fraction of component 2 and which we have to find out. Let's begin. Molar mass of CHCl3 we can find out by adding the atomic mass of all the atoms present in this formula and it will come 119.5 gram per mole. In the same way, molar mass of CH2Cl2 will come 85 gram per mole. From these, we can find out the number of moles of chloroform. As we know, number of moles is equal to mass in gram divided by molar mass and this will come 0.213 mole in the same way number of moles of ch2cl2 mass in gram is 40 gram and divided by molar mass of ch2cl2 is 85 gram per mole and this is 0.47 mole the total number of moles is this 0.23 plus 0.47 0.683 mole and now we can find out the mole fraction of each one so this is mole fraction of chloroform this is the number of moles of chloroform divided by total number of moles 0.312 mole fraction of ch2cl2 this is the number of moles of ch2cl2 divided by total number of moles this will come 0.688 now in this formula we are assuming that component 1 is chloroform and component 2 is ch2cl2 now put the value p note 1 this is given 200 this is P02, this is given 415, this is P01 is 200 and this X2 mole fraction of component 2 which we have 
calculated and this is 0 0.688 put the value and if we solve it it will come 347.9 mm mercury so this is the solution for first part now come to the second part we have to find out the mole fraction of each component in wave per phase and for this these are the formula which we have discussed earlier we use these two formula but for this first of all we have to find out the vapor pressure of component 1 and vapor pressure of component 2 by using this Raoult's law equation that is p naught 1 is equal sorry p1 is equal to p naught 1 multiplied by x1 where 1 is for chcl3 and 2 for ch2 cl2 so first we use the vapor pressure of chloroform this is 200 into 0 0.312 this will come 62.4 mm mercury and this is vapor pressure of CH2Cl2. This is 415 into 0 0.688. This is 285.5 mm mercury. Now we can find out the total vapor pressure. This is P1 plus P2. Add them, we will get 347.9 mm mercury. Is it clear? This is the vapor total vapor pressure. Vapor pressure of vapors. Now put this value into these formulas this is the mole fraction of chloroform this is vapor pressure of chloroform divided by total vapor pressure this will come 0 0.18 this is the mole fraction of ch2cl2 this is the vapor pressure of ch2cl2 divided by total pressure and this will come 0 0.82 i think you have understood this type of numerical now after this we must be able to compare the Raoult's law and Henry's law. Actually Raoult's law is a special case of Henry's law. How? Just compare. Raoult's law is for liquid liquid solutions. Henry's law is for gas in a liquid solution. This is the statement for Raoult's law. Partial vapor pressure of each component of the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction present in solution and mathematically we can represent like this where this is i represent any component like 1 and 2 we are using the i for any component partial vapor pressure of the gas in vapor uh, partial vapor pressure of the gas in vapor phase is proportional to the mole fraction of the gas in the solution that is p is equal to khx now if we compare this equation and this equation so we can say that is partial vapor pressure of the volatile component that is liquid <clears throat> in liquid liquid solution or gas in gas in liquid solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction in solution then what is the difference difference is only for constant kh and p naught i Thus, we can say Raoult's law becomes a special case of Henry's law in which Kh becomes equal to P naught I. Now, vapor pressure of solutions of solids and liquids, where solids are the non volatile and liquids are volatile. Vapor pressure, we know the definition of vapor pressure. Liquids at given temperature vaporize. And under equilibrium conditions, the pressure exerted by the vapors of liquid over the liquid phase is called vapor pressure. Now, if a known volatile solute is added to a solvent to a given solution, the vapor pressure of the solution is only from the solvent alone. Now, just see this from diagram. In this, we are taking the pure solvent. The surface is covered by only the solvent molecules and it contributes to the vapor state now if we mix the solute which is non volatile represented by these green spheres and they will not contribute to this vapor phase so we can say in this situation the vapor pressure is only due to these solvent molecules not from these solvent solute molecules so we can say in such type of situation the vapor pressure of the solution at a given temperature is found to be lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent at the same temperature why because in such solution the number of solvent molecules escaping from the surface is reduced thus the vapor pressure is also reduced 
तो वी कैन से इन सच टाइप ऑफ बाइनरी सोल्यूशन वेन नॉन वोलेटाइल सोल्यूट इज एडेड तो सॉल्वेंट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई वन एंड सोल्यूट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई टू बट द वेपर प्रेशर इज ओनली ड्यू टू द सॉल्वेंट दट इज बाई वन दट्स बाई वी कैन से इफ यू अप्लाई द राउल स्लो पी नॉट वन इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू एक्स वन where this is p not 1 this is the vapor pressure of solution which is only due to the component 1 that is a volatile solvent and x1 is the vapor pressure of solvent which is volatile so we will get the p1 is equal to p not 1 x1 thanks